Well, obviously the most um, significant difference in the past decade has been the growth of cybercrime. When you have uh, a situation as you did a year or so ago, when a, a central bank of a country, the Bangladeshi Central Bank, lost $81 million over the space of a weekend and came within a, a hair's breadth of losing uh, uh, over a billion dollars, um, then you know that things have changed dramatically because <clears throat> no bank robber with uh, a sawn-off shotgun could ever reach that sort, of, that sort of money. So we have gone into an entirely new stage of financial crime and cyber is at its center. Well, it's very difficult for governments to fight financial crime in the age of cyber because so much of it goes through private companies. So what government strategies are boiling down to is they're saying to the private sector, look, we can advise, we can give you help, we can give you intelligence, and we need to cooperate, but ultimately we cannot protect your systems, and so it's up to you to do that. So the onus is on the private sector to keep its own house in order in terms of, um, in terms of digital hygiene. In some sectors they're doing it quite well, in other sectors they're doing it badly. The banking sector has, let's say, a mixed bag of results. There are, of course, various types of financial crime. We have, in the United Kingdom, quite a lot of conventional financial crime going through the city. And that's because traditionally, well, over the past 25 years or so, we've preferred a light touch to our uh, banking arrangements in the, in the city. And that meant that in the late 1990s and the first decade of this century, the government was trying to attract money from all over the world and so it tended not to ask questions about when it was coming from. So people could invest money in the United Kingdom without the government actually knowing where it's coming from, what its origins are, and, and so on. So you see that financial crime is related to, uh, to regulations in particular jurisdiction. On the cyber aspect, on the, on the, the more uh, virtual type of financial crime, then it's very, very difficult. It's very difficult for governments to do anything about it. However, the European Union's decision to introduce the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, is going to be significant. Whether it will work or not, we don't yet know. But it will force companies, in the first instance, to raise their standards about data protection. And that means breaches are likely to be not so frequent, and when they happen, they must be reported. So the interesting thing about both Russia and China, but let's take Russia first, is, is that people are talking at the moment about a new Cold War, and certainly in terms of the intelligence agencies, it, it has echoes of the original Cold War. But the Russian economy is better integrated with the West than it was, and in fact, Russian energy sales in particular to the European Union are very important to the Russian economy and parts of the European Union are very dependent on Russian imports and so if we are seeing the beginning of a Cold War it's going to be slightly different but in the area of cyber we have made very little progress and from the early part of this century there has been significant evidence that Russian intelligence services work with Russian organized crime uh, in order to further national security interests. And that means we have no cooperation between uh, European Union member states, the US and Russia on the, cyber, uh, uh, on the cyber scene. What is interesting though is for the past three years, relations between the EU and America on the one hand and the Chinese on the other have improved in this zone. And so that's a model for showing you how cooperation can move forward. <music>